Hi everybody, I'm Zach, and that's Christopher. Together we make Dream EV. And this is our electric powered Volkswagen van again that we just finished converting. We're working on some stuff, some smaller things that we can do while the van is up and running. We mocked up a template of a skid plate for it, and we're gonna cut that out of steel, bend it up, put it in place. So you say a skid plate, but it's not really quite a skid plate. It'll never be going up and over rocks. It'll never be off-road. What it really is is a, is a sheet of metal to protect these delicate wires. Because that's slightly worried about hitting a chunk of tire. I'm not going to call it a sheet of metal to protect fragile wires every time I refer to it, though. So I, henceforth, I will simply refer to it as a skid plate. All right. Unless you come up with a better, shorter term. Episode 43, skid plate. All right, we have a beauty of a bracket right here, ready to be digitized. I'm gonna set it down on our cutting mat, get real high above it, take a photo. Next few steps are on a computer, so let's do that. We're gonna use a photo editor and a vector editor in order to digitize these files. It's very important for our purposes that the document be exactly the size as a reference photo. And in our case, we're using an 18 by 24 cutting mat. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import it into the application, and then we're gonna trim up the edges so that there's a little bit less that we gotta mess with. Once that's done, we're gonna go into the transform tool and physically make this the exact size of this document so that the next few steps are easier. In some applications, this might be called free transform. Um, in this application, it's called perspective. We're gonna tweak these corners until we're absolutely happy with them. Once that happens, then we can move on to the next step. Apply. Boom, now it's at the right scale, so that's amazing. We saved the photo of our bracket at 100% scale, and now we're free to import it into our vector editor. First thing we're gonna do is set up our canvas to the exact same size as the photo, the exact same size as our reference object. Then we can import it. This is our document. Pop this guy in here. It fits perfectly, because we already went through the trouble of sizing it. Now we can make our shapes. So this technique may be different than something you've seen before. Um, it's not better, it's not worse than digitizing in any other way. We could have measured all the angles individually and took measurements with the calipers and entered it into Fusion 360 and had parametric design. That would have been fine. But the thing is, this project didn't really require it. And many projects that we do also don't require it. Honestly, what we needed was a piece of metal this shape. Digitizing it in the way that we did allows us to make the shape that we actually need and not necessarily fight with any of the uh, constraints that Fusion 360 will put upon us. At the end of the day, all we're looking for is vector shapes. And a vector editing program is able to output those. The only caveat in the entire process being you as the author are responsible for closing all of your shapes and making sure your paths are complete. It's not going to do it for you. Well, it's reversed color. No fill. Stroke's going to bump. We're going to bump that way up. Yeah, this is what we want. We want dash now. Let's make this guy big old fatty. Something like that. Okay, that's kind of the base idea. A little bit more tweaking. Add a hole here, um, add some more eyelets, and then we'll get the final shape. We have come up with a design that we're happy with and ready to send out to cut. Here, let's take a look.
here we have a piece of steel with slots for bending. This hole here is to mount straight to one of our motor mounts. But as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any other kind of mounting point. That's what this guy's for. So this uh, has a place for mounting and it has this little shaft that we will put a piece of tube steel onto. We can cut it to whatever length we need to. And then the other end of the tube steel will go to the thing. And then this will go up somewhere and mount somewhere for more rigidity. So we gotta go get some tube steel for making that. So that's what we're gonna do now. You don't even care. Uh, well, the stop sign's there, the line is here. Excuses, that's all I hear. I stopped. I'm at a stop now. I'm currently stopped. Ah, uh, what's this guy? Yeah? You designed it. This is your bracket, man. <laughs> I've never bent relief cuts like this, so... Yeah, big machines would be able to break this without the relief cuts, so we should be fine. All right, let's uh, put a right angle on it and see how close we are. Okay. It's more than that, but I'm gonna go check anyway because I'd rather check and fit. There we go. And I think that's pretty much what we were looking for. So now I just need to bend this little tab up a little bit. Your hands are so soft. <laughs> that kind of looks like what we wanted, right? It does. I would just like to say at this point that having a CNC plasma table seems like a really awesome thing. Think of how long this would have taken us without that. I mean, minus the fact that you had to drive three hours away <laughs> in order to do it and all the setup time that you put into that machine. But now that it's set up and... I mean, that would have taken us all day. And really all we did is take it off the machine cleaned it up with a grinder and, and put it on the bit. edge of the table and went ah and we're there now, I'll tell you one thing we learned probably is that these slots don't need to be so massive yeah I don't know if we're gonna fill that with weld or not I think maybe we'll weld in a couple spots just to give it some more strength but also it's actually otherwise it's a plate that's it's a cup and it could hold water I kind of like having some holes for drainage yeah, it'll be inclined so. a little bit like that yeah. And I think the end is a little long, so we got a little bit more work to do. So. All right, let me go fit it. See what it looks like in place. 
Oh, 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 O'Reilly's. Auto parts. Ow! And here we have a skid plate in its natural environment. Oh boy. Christopher, I believe we've done something. Uh -huh. Scale of one to ten, how happy are you? I am oh, a 9.34. That is intensely accurate. Cousin It was the one with the hair. Yeah. What was the hand? Uh, maybe Thing. That sounds about right. This is what we're going to use to connect the skid plate to the chassis itself. You said skid plate! Jeez. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and technically I'm wrong and I hate myself because of it. This will be connecting our safety shield <laughs> to, the, to the chassis. Um, we're going to build it kind of like a bike and how uh, the rear dropouts work. We're gonna put a little notch here, um, and then we're gonna inset these little keys, I guess you can see. All right, after that cutting operation, huh? you can see our two little slots. Uh, not too difficult, we hit it with the angle grinder and then took a little tiny file to it to make sure the edges are nice and pretty. Um, so these little eyelets will slide right in, just like that. Um, this one's a little shallow because it has, it's going to be accommodating a bend. Can you see that? Alright, we're going to do a modification to our bracket. No big deal, this was planned in our template. We have this area up here. We have this area right here denoting that things might be changed. Also, we have a no zone. So that's fun. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lop off a little bit here so it's not quite as long. And then we're gonna cut a tab into this bracket right here so we have something to put our pipe to. That's the next step, should be fun. I matched the van today, look. Two-tone, dark and light blue. Okay, let's talk about what you've actually been doing other than matching your outfit to the van. All right. Here is our iron underwear, protecting our high voltage cables. Um, this is probably your best shot right here for seeing how we slotted that tube and just slotted it over top of our plate and we'll just weld it up. Up here it's the same plate, just cut into tabs. Once again, it's just slotted and fitted in. I think Christopher told you earlier that they do on bikes for like dropouts and stuff on bicycles, so I'm very happy with it and we'll tack it up probably tomorrow morning. Okay, Zach, what's the next steps? Uh, I have to fit it exactly how I want it, make sure it stays where I want it, and then tack all the little joints, and then drop it and full weld it. It's coming together superb. Superb. Thank you. Okay. Let's just go weld a couple beads and stick it back on. As you have seen, these were very easy to bend because we designed it that way. But now that it's in place, we don't want it to be weak. 
I want to strengthen these up a little bit to keep any deformation if we do hit something. So uh, I created this little gusset. It'll fit right in here. So that's what I'm doing. Just gonna weld that in. I think that'll do everything we need to do and it looks nice. I'm just gonna weld it up. Here's my gusset. All gusseted. I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. Slap a coat of paint on it. Okay, here's the bracket in all its glory. It's been painted, it looks amazing. Zach, Zach added a little reinforcement triangle here to make it a little bit more skookum. Um, it got a coat of primer, it got a coat of paint, and it's been sitting all night in the van with a heater. Kind of like a hot box scenario. Um, so now that everything's dry, we're ready to install it and uh, get the van back on the road. And now we're outside again. Yeah, uh, between then and now has been a few days. Christopher wanted to take the van out, so he put the skid plate on, took his brothers for a joy ride, made their buttholes pucker just a little bit, and uh, here we are. It's on, it looks great. Now we're on to the next thing, next episode. Tune in, see what we do. It's probably gonna be vinyl. Thanks for watching, guys. Be good people. See you later.